Okay, so you started working for Mr. Cronefield after... Well, I finished high school in May and I was a worried the AMP in the afternoon. They put me on assistant manager at the AMPO in Central Park. I, didn't, I knew I didn't want to be on gross in the time. I said, well, Grandpa asked and said, not you see if you can get a job with Cronefield, the book buying place, and learn that trade. And I said, well, I'll try it. And I went up to see him. He said, yeah, you can start to work Monday. We didn't talk money or anything, and so I worked in the first week, and Friday gave me a seven dollar, that was my pay, a dollar, <laughs> and uh, I worked that way for a year, and uh, I'd work from, I'd get there at 6.30 in the morning, especially in the wintertime, and build a fire, have a place warm, he got there, and uh, we never leave for about 4.30, quarter five because I had to get out of the Kruger's place to catch me a ride to the West End and I flag her out of walking West End Hospital all the way to Paddle. So then I had a car fare. I just felt, didn't feel like I spent that seven cents. <laughs> Sometimes people come along and you can pick me up and uh, I'd get a ride to Paddle that way. Well I worked there a year like that for seven dollars a week. Now I got a raise. He raised me up to fifteen dollars a week. And uh, no, no, at first I didn't raise me to ten dollars, three dollars, three dollar raise. Worked that another year, he raised me to fifteen dollars. Well, I was doing great. And uh, the hours I put in, uh, he never paid in overtime. I, I worked like, you know, we had a who's who, American University of Colleges, five thousand big thick books. And uh, I'd work at night making covers with somebody else and I need they were getting paid a little something. He didn't pay them much either. But uh, I didn't get anything extra for working overtime. It's just I just was supposed to do it. But he did buy some nickel drink about every evening. He'd come up and go out the corner and get somebody to pick us up a Buffalo Rock or something. <laughs> a big deal. But uh, and when I got drafted in the service, I was making fifteen dollars a week and. Uh, so I kind of felt good about getting grabbed from the service to get away from him. <laughs> but I didn't take no lunch time, just eat a sandwich or something. No work through lunch. And uh, so when I went to service, you know, I came back, I went back up and he said, you gonna come back to work? And I said, yeah, if I if we get the money right, I will. And uh, he said, how much you want? I said, oh, well, I'm, I want $50 a week to start with. And uh, he said, well, I don't know about that. And then, he said, then some kind of GI Bill or something, get, get some assistance for like going to school. And I said, well, I think there is. I'll check and see. So I got $15 a week out of the government, $35 a week out of him. So I was getting $50 a week while I was, while I was wanting. And that's how I was able to save a little money. Of course, I saved money all during the war on war bonds, savings bonds. Because they didn't have to get a pay. They always have to take two war bonds out every month. Savings bonds, they call them. And well, there's war bonds back then. Now they're savings bonds. But uh, I worked for him, and, and uh, we got a little slack. I think he thought, well, the war was over with. This is back in 1949. And uh, we got a little slack. He says, you need to take off next week. We don't, <coughs> excuse me. We don't have anything to do. So I took off a week. When I came back, he says, uh, how would you like to go to work for somebody else? I said, what What you talking about? He said, well, I got a man who wants to buy the company. I said, well, I was hanging around hoping I'd be have a chance on one. He said, you want to bid on it? I said, yeah, I'd like to. I said, I, I was hoping to. And uh, so he said, well, you put down what you'll give me on a piece of paper, and I'll put down what he's, what he's giving me for, what he's offering me for. You want to know if I go to work for him? I told him, no, I wouldn't go to work for him. I'd go and bid it somewhere, somewhere, somewhere myself. So he put out fifteen thousand dollars, and I put out twelve thousand, which is three thousand dollars apart. And of course, they all had was junk back then. Most of that stuff, some of that stuff, I bought. And uh, he said, "Well, he, you want to give me fifteen thousand? You want you want to meet his price?" I said, "Yeah, don't meet his price." He said, "Well, we'll uh, we'll work up a plan then, but I'm not going to let you have it till October. This is in the first part of the summer when you tell me to lay off a week when I came back." 
I didn't know whether I was going to go back to work here or not. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, uh, oh, I see. Where am I at? He said, uh, going to sell it to you for 15000 in October. I, I, I was going to pay him $3,000 down. And, uh, So much a month, yeah, and I'm gonna pay him rent on the building, hundred dollars a month on the bill and all that. And uh, but I had to. He said you gotta stay here ten years. I that's in the that's gonna be in the sale. If you got you can't move out of this building for ten years. So I stayed fourteen years. There, but anyway, uh, he come up wanting to sell me that building up there, and he wanted. He says I'll tell you what. Says you give me. Uh, I it was going to be out to $40,000. It was going to be so much a month for 20 years. It's going to tie me up for 20 years. <laughs> and then old Bill and old Lynn's 24 feet. I said, well, let me think about it. He was living down in Florida, and he went down on vacation and bought a place down there. Come back up here and sold his house in the West End and moved by now. I sure was glad when he was gone. That doesn't look at him. <laughs> and, uh, he, uh, I, I, I got down to certain point. I says, uh, I had to build, build up my money. I could pay him off any time. I says, you want to make it? There was no interest on the money I was paying, you stupid. I said, I'll, I'll pay you I'll pay you the balance I got. I'm going I'm to have to stay in, you know, until my 10 years is up anyway. So I can go and give it the money if you want it. Because uh, he's saying about going to Germany. And, and uh, he, he took it and I paid him off. So it was, it was clear the business. And all I had was a hundred dollar a month rent to pay. But he never did get up on the rental, and I was surprised at that. But after I moved out, that's the thing they never did rent out to anybody else. It stayed empty for all those years, so I finally brought it down. I thought I bought it for $6,000. I think he was to charge me $40,000 for it. And uh, as soon as he left, I went looking for property, and I went on the south side and found it on 4th Avenue South. And I called up that guy, his name on the, on the sign up at the and he won't know, you know, if I was able to pay for it. Yeah, I can buy it if, if the price is right. He said, well, I think I can get it for you for $15,000, but you want to pay $1,000 for the road payment on it. I tell you, on the front, they, they, they repaved the road and they was charging each lot so much. And I, I said, well, I'll be going. It's going to be $16,000. So we made a deal. And Gordon was living next door to me. And Gordon Lewis, and he was he was in charge of building for some company that you know did a lot of big building around town. I said, "You want to figure on a job for me?" He said, "Yeah." He said, "I'll take it on. You'll be my first one." He said, "I'll take it on, and we'll keep up with it, and I'll, I'll uh, charge exactly what I get it for plus a percentage." And I said, "That's fine." So he built a whole building, air conditioning, and everything for forty-two thousand dollars, and. Uh, I have fifteen thousand. No, no, I have forty-two thousand in the whole thing, lots and all. Wow. And uh, so uh, then we added. Uh, we, that was five thousand square feet. And then we added two thousand more later on. And I paid fifty thousand, about two thousand square feet on the back. Mm -hmm. Because stuff had been going up. But when I built it was the right time. There wasn't much, much going on back then. But that guy, he worked me and worked me and. Never offering me any extra money at all, ever. No vacation, not have another had a vacation the whole time I worked there. And uh, lunchtime, I worked through lunchtime a lot of days. And he was, I was making a lot of money for him, I'll tell you. Because after I got that thing, I said, This is great. That's what you know, I had $8,000 to make. When I bought the business, I had $600 left. That's what I had to offer him. Well, you know, I had $8,000 in the bank. I said, this is great. Mm -hmm. You were making good off me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what else did you need to know? He went to Europe and you, you ran it for him, didn't you? Six months. And he, I ran it six months and, and I was working long hours then, you know, doing everything. Got to go at night and work down there. And uh, I ran his bank account up. He left so much and I ran it up. He didn't leave it, but he left less than a thousand dollars in the bank. He spent all his going over there. And, uh, I ran it up to 14000 for him. So I 
got to one. Now, what's he going to give me now when he gets back? I mean, I've really put a lot of time in. So he gave me $600, $100 a month extra. And I ran that place for him. The hall of building, took the envelopes and all, and wrote the envelope. We used to have to send statements at him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, wasn't no way, wasn't no way, else would work like I did for him. And he put up with what I put up with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, strange thing about it, everybody around town liked him, but some people didn't like him he did business with him. And when they found out I had it, I started getting business from these companies. They, he, they wouldn't fool with him, they didn't like him. Mm -hmm. He just had certain people that liked him. And like over at the court, I said, I liked him over there, Mr. Wilson. Wilson, that was his buddy. And I got more of them being in South Wilson than Cromfield did. I got, you know, again, with those girls that worked in the office all in, they saw too, I was getting my part out of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What else you need? <laughs> Was weak sometime. But the same amount of I mean, where'd you ever, where'd y'all meet Cronfield at? Grandpa got him over in Europe. He was.